Do you want to hear about uh, Gigabyte Z170 lineup? Well, we're going to do that and also some of the features as well. We're going to do an interview with Hunter, who's from uh, Gigabyte in Taiwan, and we're going to be taking a look at the boards themselves and the features and all the cool stuff that goes into designing a motherboard. <laughs> Check out our website at techteamgb.co.uk for more info on both this and many other products, and also up-to-date news on all things tech. Stick around for this awesome video. So hi guys and welcome to Tech Team GB. Today we've got an interview with Hunter from Gigabyte, and he's going to be taking a look through uh, taking a look through the uh, Z170 boards from Gigabyte. So um, if you want to just introduce yourself a little bit and uh, you know what you do and uh, you know. Everybody, my name is Hunter. It basically I've come from Gigabyte Technology from Taiwan. Uh, I work in the headquarters. My title is product manager. So my basic job for in here for today will be introduce our Gigabyte latest Skylake series motherboard. We'll be special talk about on the G1 gaming series and also one of the ultra durable series for today. Awesome. So if you want to start off with obviously the G1 highest end, um, so what's new about that one and uh, you know, what, what can you expect? Uh, basically, you can see in here, this is a pretty big box. Uh, this is our flagship product, we call it G1 Gaming. Okay, this is a gaming G1, and it's a huge box inside. Basically, this put, we try our best to put almost everything you can imagine in this motherboard. So it's full of features, it's a flagship product we have, we ever did. So basically, you can see it's quite shining. The, the looking or design is brand new. So it, this first time you see that we look black, red, and white color. For car skin. Also, you will notice about metal shading. We I'll talk about more detail later on. So I just go quickly breathing. So it's a like four-way SOI. Hide this sound, uh, creative sound card. The you ever seen here Zach side level. So it's a very high-end sound card in this audio. And in the back, you also see the latest connectivity like the USB Type C with the Intel controller. Also have HDMI 2.0 in here. The also Wi-Fi everything in here. So. Basically, it's like flagship product you ever see in the Giga Power Line, also other Skylight product. It's a very high end, very niche. And this is our top top line product. And the other thing I want to go quickly go through is our mainstream gaming, it's a gaming 3. And so, also have the similar features. So, you got a metal shouting, PCI slot, it's nice and nice and cool, black and red, like a heat sink in here, USB Type C in here, and HDMI, and also different output like a D stop or DVI connector as well. Cool. Um, so you got a, a bit of a black box on the table there. Um, what is that, and why is it sort of different from uh, the other ones, uh, other boards? Yes, yeah, so this is very interesting. The accessory basically come from the G1. Okay, this is a five and quarter inch front bay, front bay, and basically they offering additional USB 3.1 for you, so easier for you to connect from the front panel. So good thing on here is I open it here, so. Basically, you can see the photo in here. This is not like a dummy ball. You just connect to your the header from the from your motherboard. It's fully designed. So this is a controller, three point one controller. We have power delivery chip in here. In the back, you connect with a one of the PCIe Express. So it's basically taking the piece PCIe Gen three by two lens, so up to sixteen gig per second, and two SATA power from your power supply. That's why we call this one is able to go with hundred watt power delivery. So if you have like the any like USB Type C notebook like the Chromebook, basically you can use this one to charge your Chromebook without any problem. Go up to 100 watt, or even you can try to light up anything you like, any like USB Type C device. Because so all we see in here is that like USB Type C will be mainstream for coming year. So you already heard like the, the new Apple, the MacBook using Type C, Chromebook using that. Uh, rumor says more and more portable devices, even like the cell phone or tablet, will be all strung into Type C. So to us, the USB Type C will be very important. Also, in our motherboard in here, we've been specially highlight the USB Type C we're using Intel controller, not others, because the main reason in here would be Intel controller be more far advanced than other controller. Basically, it's the Intel controller or some people you already know, aka Thunderbolt 3. So this will be combined all kind of high speed connectivity. So if you're looking for Thunderbolt connection, if you find uh, they're gonna have the converter so you can convert from Type C to Mini Display Port, you can connect to any like Thunderbolt 2 device. Also, they still can do power deliver. So also standard USB the connectivity and plus they're gonna supporting PCI signal. So I knew some company gonna make the USB Type C M.2. 
like a small enclosure so you can use an M.2 PCI and connect to here so Type-C will be more unique and the definition for Type-C is Intel trying to do is creating one single chip will be universal so no, no matter what you plug in you connect to they just able to recognize and use it so it's a uh, troubleless, it's painless, so you don't need to recognize what, what should I connect. So we all see the Type-C will be mainstream, the only new connector in coming future. So we heard like the monitor manufacturer that keep on, keep on, main, keep on mouse, every guy can jump into that standard. And then some monitor might have the like, built-in like the hub inside, so you can still connect. And the other thing, good thing on the Intel controller will be, they also supporting the DAISY chain. So you also can do this DC trend, so you can connect it up to 65. So that's also a heritage from the Thunderbolt technology. So we think it's a good solution. The reason I still want to highlight the internal controller because it's only a single chip to do everything. It's more simple and elegant way to design the complex design like this. If you're using some other solution, then it's more complicated and it's not easy to do and also kind of damage the bandwidth yeah. because uh, Others, they like the one of like us media chip, there's pure data. So, if you want to also have the party, you need to add another chip. Yeah. You want to display properly, another chip. Yeah. You need to have the you know reversible type C, then you add another switch in there. Yeah. So, it's not the elegant way or simple way to do. Even though we do have facing some technical issue when we co op with a new Thunderbolt 3 controller yeah. because uh, Intel got a huge ambition, but it turned out a lot bad. So but still, we're working with uh, Intel, we are their alpha side, so in NR's uh, return is very good, the, the chip the performance is outstanding, we have the testing result to you, so later you can see on the screen, so the testing report will show up, it's outstanding performance because they're using the PCI Gen, yeah, up to the Gen 3 by 4 32 gig compared to the 10 gig from others, mm -hmm. so it's everything we've put a lot of focus on Intel controller, yes. Awesome. Uh, you've also got the um, the NVMe uh, sort of M.2 adapter which yeah. comes in the box for the G1 yeah. as well. Uh, this adapter basically will come with a G1 GTO Gaming 7, this special small con converter. This basically, uh, we also team up the Intel, now they're pushing a lot uh, heavy on Intel 750. The SSD is like a consumer level SSD but very high performance. It's the first you ever see in a PCI Gen 3 yeah. by 4 SSD in the market. And Intel also very serious about to push that part into a mainstream product. They have two different versions, they have PCI version, so it's like PCI SSD, you put any like PCI slot. Yeah. But some people might still for limitation they want to, for example, they want using 4 grade cards, so they're choosing a 2.5 inch model. And 2.5 inch model from Intel, basically they call U.2 connector. Yeah. But U.2 basically is a mini SaaS connector. Yeah. But none of the multiple have the mini SaaS, so we created this special adapter for you. So you can use the Intel 750, the mini SaaS cable, connect here and connect to any M.2 in here. So you yeah. convert it to here. So you can use this one to put the any M.2. Okay. So you won't lose any performance, then it's an yeah. easy way to do. Thing. And the last thing there is the uh, the mini connector, right? Yeah, yeah. This like mini connector. This like gigabyte mini connector in here. You, you we all know like this really pain. You know sometimes when you try to build your own system, so especially you have to focus all the small pin on multiple. You have phone panel in here, so it's on the small pin. So what we do is create a small connector in here. So what you can do is you can pre-insert those uh, cable mini cable from your chassis in here. Then you just plug in here. So it's simple, just plug in. Okay, so this side the mini connector we made and the gigabyte the connector so it's to reduce your hard time to you know focus on so tiny pins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a lot smaller as well. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So um is there anything else I'd like to cover with the motherboards? Um yeah. so the new range? Yeah. The other thing just I mentioned about I also want to highlight will be uh, on this one's will be very exclusive the some blaster, yeah. the sound card in here. Sure. Uh, we spent a lot of time, we co work with a creative lab. We actually, the whole part is taking almost a year. Yeah. So, it's back and forth, and this is the first time the multiple you ever see will be able to label creative sound blaster 120 dB logo. Yeah. So, that logo will be on the color box and all the promotional data. The 120 dB is not from the chipset itself, it's from your back panel. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's really high decibel and very good and realistic sound in here. And it's really hard to get that approval. We spent a lot of time and we co up with the creative lab and they teach us know how, how to design and fine tune the sound. So you end up here and also some special design you see this triple OP amp in here. Yeah. So this is also something new you never see on Marble. So one is for phone panel. The other two is for back panel here. Yeah. You might wonder why it's a two OPM, but because of an independent channel. So we designed on this sound core 3D and they require a pure mono design. So yeah. one OPM for each channel, for left channel, the yeah. other one for right channel. Yeah. So this very niche and I won't say too many because you have to hear to believe. So yeah. I let you guys to test and you will hear the big difference compared to normal sound card. Sure. We'll be doing a review at some point in the future uh, anyway, yeah. so um, we'll just stick around for that one. Um, but yeah, I've just just to make it clear, the, um, the three op amps, there's one for the front panel and two for the back panel. Yes. But it's um, the two for the back panel isn't just you know, Pure mono. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's one for each channel and that yeah. was because of the specification yes. for creative, mm -hmm. it wasn't yeah. just, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, other thing I just want to ask about um, is the uh, reinforced PCR slots. So yeah. um, what obviously it, it's cool to have, but um, what's the sort of, I guess, real world yeah. benefit of that yeah. besides looking uh, shiny? <laughs> the reason we put this one, reinforced or we call it unibody design, uh, the main reason behind is quite interesting story in the behind. Uh, we do have, a, you know, in main region we have our main center, so we always collect the major issue, what's causing the issues, right? One thing there's a number comes in, then we feel, figure out it's quite interesting stuff. On the high-end marble, especially on high-end marble, yeah. the top five issues from our main, one of them is the PCI slab been tearing off, or back connection, okay? okay? So we're still starting to look into that issue, why? How come the like you know like mainstream or low end marble never have that issue? But high marble, the main one of the major like defective issue is the PCI slab been tearing off. Okay. So we started take a look in that. And it turned out it's like because most of high end gaming marble or like high end marble, the user also packed with you know bundle with high end graphic card. Yeah. You know, like some high end graphic card like, like 980, yeah. really heavy and bundle too slack. Yeah. So if you put that kind of car in here, even though you have put two screws in the back, but sometimes because the car is also heavy in yeah, the front. Okay. In the long term, the gravity pulling, so the PCI is start starting pulling off. So you okay. see, you know, those like the ceiling point will be starting pulling off. Or okay. rules will be break when you're yeah. shipping them. Yeah. You know, the, you're shaking, right, yeah. when you're shipping them. So that's issue, a lot of issue we figure out. So actually then our engineer starting to look into that issue. Then we right. see any way we can improve that, okay? Yeah. So that's when we come out with metal shielding. Right. And it's not just for looking, they also soldering inside the model ball. So it's one piece design. And in the lab testing, after we've done this one, and we do dropping test, by Ferrico is up to 1.7 times stronger than standard. So we to trying to eliminate that kind of issue. That's also we see, sometimes the revolution is not like something you really can see. Sometimes getting from small point. That's why we're trying to improve the quality on the model ball. That's what we did in here. So even with the high end like this one or the entry, like the entry model, like the gaming three, we also put this one in here. So we want to make sure like the, everybody, the special gamer, when they put a high end graphic card, they have no problem with that after a certain time. Awesome. Um, last thing we want to talk about is the Turbo B clock. So can you give us an idea of what it is and what it does? Yeah, uh, on this generation, right, uh, a lot of models, like in, even on the, some UD series we brought here, we have a Turbo B clock, okay? Basically, it's external clock jam, okay? Even though the Intel in the Skylab, they have an unlimited clock already being the case cube, yeah. but somehow, we also testing, with testing, so we figure out using external clock sometimes more easy and more accurate and won't affect other PCI frequency. So that's what we did. The Intel, the Intel clock chain is providing from 100 megahertz to 200 megahertz. Then we did a little bit lower, we did 90 to 200. So you still get a little bit more headroom. So you can combine with all kinds of different ratio and you do your overclocking. Right, okay. mm -hmm. nice. um, so yeah, obviously uh, with the gaming one board, we have three SATA Express ports. And even if you do use the front panel, which will take up one SATA Express port, 
Um, that still leaves you with two. Um, but personally, as a reviewer, that's the first um, SATA Express device I've seen. Um, is there any more SATA Express devices to come? What, what should we be looking for there? Uh, basically, uh, if you've seen here the Marvel, yes, we do have three SATA Express in here, but you also heard actually SATA Express not new since last year, Z97. Yeah. It was already show up in there. Mm -hmm. But in that time, all the, you know, the hard drive manufacturers say they're gonna come up with something like the SATA Express hard drive, traditional hard drive. But unfortunately, till now, none of them really ship the product. Uh, one of the main reasons we heard is maybe because it's totally different, you know, standard SATA interface transfer into the PCI base. Right, okay. To those manufacturers, they still have difficult time to do that. Right. And then the other thing is uh, PCI SSD dropping the price a lot. Yeah. Now also holding those manufacturers back. So mm -hmm. a lot of situation will be they're thinking right now also some users already use it, like using PCI SSD for main drive. Yeah. and all the gaming or contents put on the standard SATA drive. Yeah. So in that situation, so a lot of situation like that, so basically hard drive manufacturer right now, they've been a little bit hesitated to push yeah. that kind of drive, okay? So in that situation, basically you won't see any SATA Express device for now, but it's kind of waste because there is something like this, right? That's why we come out the phone panel, so yeah. we're gonna fully utilize the two PCI Gen 3 slide in here, yeah. so you put 16 gig, so that's why you can do the USB Type 3. But again, to my personal opinion, I don't see this standard, you know, the SATA Express will be into the hard drive. Right, I don't right. see that. I will see the M.2 or PCI, the NVMe drive will be mainstream yeah. very soon. That's also something I think, believe a lot of people also think the same way too. Right. Um, so thank you for letting us come down and, and take a look at the boards. So we're doing reviews of um, of the boards sort of as as to come. So um, we'll take a look at more detail yeah. of them. But uh, yeah, thank you for uh, like letting us come. Down. Thank you. It's my pleasure too. So you guys, when you guys have a testing or all the the reviewer also do the checking our board. If you have any question, leave the we have the nice Facebook or like the social media. You can feedback your question. Okay. Cool, well um, thanks guys for watching, if you enjoyed the video hit the like button if you like it, dislike if you dislike it, and leave a comment and let us know what you thought of the video, um, if you want to see more interviews with folk, um, and uh, yeah, feel free to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you. So thanks for watching this Titan GB video, uh, you've probably heard enough of me already, so I'm going to finish off by saying please subscribe if you haven't already, it helps us out a hell of a lot, and it means that just the world is in general. Please do feel free to check out some of our recent videos both down below, um, they're uh, more recent ones and they're certainly awesome. Uh, feel free to click my face for the website and click all the links over there for our Amazon affiliate uh, link, our social media and also our YouTube channel as well. Other than that, as I said, please subscribe, like, share, favourite and all the other many things possible and we'll see you all in the next video.